the HbA1c is what it's an average blood sugar for the last three months. So when you check your HbA1c, it it will give you what is the average blood glucose over the last three months, which includes your fasting, post meal, post lunch, in the middle of the night, everything. So the the number seven percent has gained popularity after the trial known as UKPDS trial. UKPDS trial has shown by far that those patients who have HbA1c for a prolonged period of time, they tend to have much fewer microvascular complications. That is eye related problems, kidney related problems and nerve related problems as compared to those who are having HbA1c of greater than 7%. Now, because it is the longest prospective trial that has been done and it has gone on for 15 to 16 years, everybody has caught on to that number 7% and subsequent trials have shown that bringing down the HbA1c to much lower than 7% is not really helping people but below 7% you are able to prevent the complications that are occurring because of diabetes and uh, uh, that's why that number 7% has come. Everybody must strive to reach an HbA1c of less than 7%. Nowadays, it's, it is said that in younger people, if you bring down the HbA1c to less than 6.5%, as long as you're not causing hypoglycemia, you should try to do that. And in very old patients who are not going to live for more than 15, 20 years as per the average, their HbA1c can be around 7 to 7.5%. But the thumb rule is everybody should have an HbA1c of less than 7% to prevent the micro and macrovascular complications of diabetes. The, the fundamental is avoiding a carbohydrate overload. So initially, you know, when we were practicing diabetes, we used to say don't eat sugar or anything at all. But as research has gone on, it is very clear that it is not the type of food that affects your blood sugar. It is the quantity and density of the food that affects for example i'll just give you an example now suppose you want to have a stomach full of uh, chapati or brown rice you will be able to have much more of it than for example a small sweet piece like gulab jamun or something that is special for festivals you will be able to have a smaller amount so as long as you are able to eat the festive foods which contain sweets at least two hours from the previous meal in such a way that the calories that are entering your body is not very high then you can definitely enjoy your festive sweets and i encourage all my patients to have their festive sweets but i tell them don't eat it after a carbohydrate load for example if you have just eaten your meal now i don't want you to eat your sweets immediately because it will double or triple the carbohydrate load why can't you wait for around two to three hours and then enjoy your sweets in limited quantities then in that way you can have it not once you can have it today you can have it again tomorrow you can have it again day after tomorrow and make sure that you've enjoyed your festive sweets as well